<laughs> Tis time, dear friends. Tis time. Halloween is just around the bend. And as we prepare to celebrate, do we know what it is that we are celebrating? What are the origins of Halloween? Do you know? Do you wonder? Well, let's learn together. <laughs> This playlist was conjured up by my enchantress friends, Monica of Up All Night DIY, Brandy of Making It My Own DIY, and Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling. We came together to create some spell-binding DIYs for Halloween for you. So remember to check out all of their channels and make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Welcome, my sweet spooky friends, to my channel, Crafting with me, Indiana Jones. And yes, there will be crafts today, but I also thought I would craft a little story. Well, it's more like the history of Halloween. There are a lot of misconceptions, and many of us don't know the origins of Halloween. Now, what are my qualifications to be talking about the history of Halloween? What are your qualifications? Ah, well, I tend to truly are. I'm a graduate of the Harvard Business School. I travel quite extensively. I lived through the Black Plague, and I had a pretty good time during that. I've seen The Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time I see it! Not to mention the fact that you're talking to a dead guy! Now what do you think? You think I'm qualified? I really don't have any. Other than the fact that I've always enjoyed celebrating Halloween, and recently it seems to have changed a lot from when I was a child. So I thought it would be nice to go back in time and find out the origins of Halloween and why many of us still celebrate it today. Skeptic in our midst, Mr. Dennison, would you care to share your California laid-back tie-dye point of view? <laughs> okay. Granted that uh, you guys here in Salem are all into these uh, black cats and witches and stuff. Stuff? Stuff? Fun. But everyone here knows that Halloween was invented by the candy companies. Oh, it's a conspiracy. It just so happens that Halloween is based on the ancient feast called All Hallows' Eve. It's the one night of the year where the spirits of the dead can return to Earth. Well said, Allison. You tell them, Allison. Now, for tonight's episode, I'm going to change things up a bit. And while I'm storytelling, I will be crafting. But I just wanted to share some vintage last minute DIYs for Halloween for your home this year. I hope you enjoy this format. And if you do, maybe I'll continue storytelling while I'm crafting. Let's get started. So Halloween or the celebration that we are continuing actually started thousands of years ago in a place we all know as Ireland. It was more of the people that were the Celts or the Celts, and they lived in the area that we now know as Ireland, Scotland, and England. That was the beginning. What they would celebrate, because they were agrarian culture, and agrarian just means that they were farmers, they would celebrate the end of the harvest. And for them, the end of the harvest was October 31st. What they called that day was Samhain. It's spelled very differently to how it's said, but it is Samhain. And what that means is the end of summer. So the evening of Samhain, these tribes would come together and join together and celebrate the bountiful harvest. They would create a big bonfire. And it's interesting to learn where the name bonfire came from, because they would create this feast and they would have animals and they would have vegetables and all sorts of foods to celebrate together. They would take the bones of the animals and throw them into the fire. A bone fire, or what we now know as a bonfire. So the Celts would gather together and they would celebrate the bounty that they would have. They would give thanks and also they would tell tales and some of them would even do divination. And I guess that's where the magical aspect of Samhain came in. So there would be old ladies that would come together with the young girls and they would look at their palms or they would look at the rocks and they would try to divine who was going to be the husband for this young girl. Of course, 
There are many celebrations and dances, and at the end of the night, they would gather one of you know, the embers from the bonfire, the communal bonfire, and walk home with it. And most notably, they would use, you guessed it, a turnip, a hollowed out turnip, and carry that ember back to them to add it to their hearth fire. They also believe that Samhain, October 31st, is when the veil between life and death was at its thinnest. So there could be those souls or spirits that would come and visit them. So many times during the harvest, they would leave some food aside for those who might come back to visit, to honor the dead and also to expel any evil spirits that might be lurking about. And that's also why they had those carved out terms to kind of ward off any kind of evil, not celebrated nor were they celebrating death. On the contrary, they were acknowledging it because now, well, summer is over and the time of darkness would begin. And as a community, they wouldn't be able to come together because of the harsh weather and they would stay within their homes unless necessary. And they were pretty much hibernating within their homes. So to be quite honest with you, Samhain was very similar to what we celebrate as Thanksgiving, mixed in with a little bit of New Year. So imagine New Year's Eve, but with Thanksgiving feast, something like that. Now, we can't talk about Halloween without talking about the Romans. The Romans? Yeah, the Romans. You didn't know this? Oh, okay. Come with me. So let's go to Rome. What's going on in there? Pre-Christian Rome, of course. Well, they had their own celebrations. One of them is called Lumeria. And Lumeria is very, very similar to Samhain, in which they believed that the veil between life and death was very thin. Now, this was around the springtime. And they also had another celebration called Parentalia. Now, in Parentalia, they would honor their dead, their parents and grandparents and all of their ancestors. They would provide food and drink and they would talk about their ancestors. Okay, that's all, all fair and good that we're in Rome, but why are we in Rome and how does this get us back to Halloween? Okay, we're getting there. All right, now, Rome. When the Romans became Christianized by Paul, the Apostle Paul, one of the things they noticed right away was the celebration of Parentalia and Lumeria. And they decided instead of, you know, being afraid of death, let's celebrate the life of Christ. So this was springtime and they decided to create a festival to venerate the souls of martyred saints, All Saints Day. But that was May 13th. However, that was in the 6th century or the 7th century, 600 AD. When they get to Ireland, thankfully by St. Patrick, um, they also see that the same veneration, the same festivals and rituals are, are taking place. So they said, let's move it now, All Saints Day, let's move it to November 1st and let's tack on another day to it anyway, which is November 2nd, All Souls Day. So the three, the one evening and the two days are known as All Hallowtide. Of course, Halloween taking over Samhain or Hallows All Hallows Eve. That's where family members would be memorialized. Then of course the martyred saints and then all the souls that are seeking their way to heaven. See? Simple. Because they believe the veil between death and life was at its thinnest, they were expecting to see maybe just a family member or someone from the from the community, but they also worried that there were some evil spirits that might come through. So many people would take the soot from the ashes and they would mark their faces and darken them so that they would just blend into the darkness or look as though they were one of the dead that have come back to visit. That's also why they carried those turnips and sometimes they would carve little faces in them. But we'll get back to that soon. I hope you're enjoying this storytelling format. I did want to step in and just mention a few items that I used in this first craft. As you can see, it's a vintage Halloween haunted house. I just used the haunted house cutout from Dollar Tree and those little characters that I got from Timu and they were so perfectly vintage that I wanted to use for this craft. And of course, we have my quality control cat 
Kuru helping me out along the way. Now, I wanted to mention this because one thing that's very old fashioned or vintage is the bobbing for apples. Where did that come from? Well, again, let's go back to Rome because they had a goddess named Pomona. Pomona was the goddess of the bounty, of cultivation, of fruit trees, of, you know, the harvest. So it was only natural that, you know, as they continued with their celebration of the harvest, they also included Pomona. And that also translated to Halloween. And therefore, that's why we have apples. There's an also a way of using apples for divination, I understand, where you would twist the, the apple... Um, stem and you would figure out oh who is it that you're going to marry or who your boyfriend was going to be and bobbing for apples started out as almost a courting ritual where a girl would put a, an apple into the barrel and then see which young man would pull out the apple that she had put in again i don't know how they knew which apple from what but i thought it was pretty cool uh, finding that out now i've never done the bobbing for apples because for me honestly um I, I always thought it was yicky. I don't know. Tell me what you think about bobbing for apples, and especially after COVID. I mean, no, no thank you. So all I wanted to do is just step in real quick before we continue the rest of the story and the tale of Halloween and just, again, show some of the items that I used. Here is a set of fairy lights that I'm going to attach to the back. And I can tell you that I am so happy that I created this. I'm going to try to do some of the vintage items that I didn't get a chance to do the rest of the season because it's just been so busy. So I hope you enjoyed this first little craft and I hope you enjoy my craft of storytelling and bringing to life the history of Halloween. I wanted to share with you one cute little idea, especially if you do little miniatures or any kind of vignettes. A cute way to make mini candles is to just use glue sticks. It's the easiest way. You take the glue sticks, cut them down to size, and what I usually do is I glue them to one of those flickering tea light uh, battery operated candles. And it's fantastic because the light sh shines right behind them so it looks like they're all lit up and it is just a cute way to add a little bit of ambiance to your vignettes your miniatures or any of your home decor for halloween by the way my secret for conjuring up cute and fun diy ideas is of course to do so with my favorite little black cat guru so here she is, and again, she's going to serve as my quality control cat for this next craft. But let's learn a little bit more about Halloween's traditions. Now, let's get back to those hollowed out turnips. Why were they so important? And what did they turn out to be later? Well, as I said before, many times they would use the hollowed out turnips to carry an ember from the communal fire back to their hearth fire, but also light their way home and they would think it would expel evil spirits that might be lurking about by carving these ugly faces in turnips. And if you've ever seen a hollowed out decorated turnip, they're not too cute looking. Well, all of that changed hundreds and hundreds of years later. In the 1800s, when Irish immigrants came here to the United States, they continued their celebration of All Hallows Eve and you know, All Saints Day and All Souls Day. But for All Hallows Eve, they would continue carving out turnips. However, turnips weren't as easy to find here in the United States, but you know what was? Pumpkins. So it's thanks to the Irish that brought the tradition of carving out pumpkins. Now, there is one specific pumpkin that's very, very interesting to learn about. I'll continue the story of a very special pumpkin we know as the jack-o'-lantern, but here I have Luna once again checking out and making sure I'm doing things properly. I wanted to go back and let you know that this paper and many of the other papers I'll be using in today's crafts, I actually got from Timu. They had a set of vintage Halloween papers, and I thought this was perfect for this craft. I'm using the branches of a Halloween tree from the Dollar Tree, and all I did here was put together a bit of a shaggy bow that matches the core with the black and white and orange and I think this sign is absolutely lovely for Halloween now to continue our story now there was one specific pumpkin that had a lot of significance and also includes a very moral story you see jack-o-lantern was named after a man that they've known as stingy jack 
He was known to be mean and he was a trickster and evil and he would steal from people and just all over not a good person at all. Well, one day he was drinking once again in one of the taverns when none other than the devil himself came to sit and share a drink with Jack. After all, he was one of his favorite tricksters, wasn't he? Well, Jack was very proud of himself and he drank and drank and drank. And then came the time for him to leave. And of course, he also realized, well, if the devil is here, it must mean he's ready to take me away because I'm about to die. So he thought to himself, I know what I can do. So he told the devil, I have no money on me and we have to pay the bill. So why don't you turn yourself into a coin? And then when I hand you over to the tavern owner, he'll be so surprised when you turn back into the devil. Oh my goodness, can you imagine how he'll scream? The devil, being quite the trickster himself, loved the idea. So of course, he changed himself into a silver coin. Now, Jack scooped up that silver coin and put it in his pocket alongside a cross that he carried with him. When the devil saw that he was there with this silver cross, he was done. He had no powers whatsoever in, as in, in the presence of Christ, in the cross. So what did Jack do? He made the devil promise not to take him yet, not to kill him yet, but to let him live 10 more years, let's say. And that way, after all, he'll do some more mean things and evil things and be awful to people and steal and trick people. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Aren't you proud of me? Wouldn't you want to have me doing all these tricks? Of course, the devil conceded. Why? We don't know, but he did. So he was able to take out the coin. And once again, the devil went on his way back to hell and wait until it was time to come back for Jack. 10 years went by and here comes the devil again to collect Jack again of all people. And when Jack saw him, well, he came up with another idea. Oh yes, it's time for me to go. I'll more than consent to go with you where I belong. And the devil was happy enough. But before I go, I'm too tired, my legs, I'm too old. I can't climb the tree and I've been so tempted to have that apple there in the tree. Hmm. Well, kind of brings back some memories for the devil, as you can imagine. So he climbed up and grabbed the apple and just about when he was about to come back down, what did Jack do? He carved a crucifix onto the tree. Now, once again, the devil was trapped. He couldn't climb down the tree. So another deal was struck and clever, stingy, trickster Jack said, now, promise me you won't take me to hell and I'll let you come down the tree. The devil had no other recourse but to concede once again. And he agreed he wouldn't take him to hell and he'd let him live a few more years. But now, when it was time for Jack to actually die, well, he came to hell and the devil said, we made a promise. You have to go somewhere else. So he went back to heaven. And of course, he wasn't let anywhere near the gates and he was sent back to hell again. And the devil's like, well, you have no place here. So I'll give you this. How about I give you an ember to take with you as you walk around the earth forever? What? Well, that's what Jack had to do. And he grabbed as he would, as any Irish person would, he grabbed a turnip, put the ember in, and he would walk around the earth forever with nowhere that he would belong. And of course, on Halloween, on All Hallows' Eve, that veil between life and death was very thin. And of course, everyone knew that Jack the Trickster would be around. So, that's what a lot of people started doing. They started bringing a little bit of Jack O'Lantern, Jack the Trickster, on their Halloween celebration. <laughs> so, many times, the Irish folk would use 
those turnips again to ward off evil and make those little markings to make it look like a face. And once they came to America, well, the pumpkin was the perfect fruit to make into a jack-o'-lantern. And as you can see, we still celebrate Halloween with a beautiful orange, happy-faced jack-o'-lantern. Now, do you know who the mother of Halloween is? No, it's not me. Thank you, but no. Anyway, the mother of Halloween is Elizabeth Krebs. You haven't heard of, oh, you haven't heard of Elizabeth Krebs? What? Well, let me tell you all about Elizabeth Krebs. Elizabeth Krebs lived in Hiawasa, Kansas. Yes, Hiawasa, Kansas. And what happened was, well, these tricksters and pranks were happening on All Hallows' Eve. Well, she was the matron of the Garden Society, and every Hallows' Eve, the children would really mess up her garden. They would tear everything apart. So, in 1913, she decided this was it. This Halloween, she was going to stop it all because she decided, you know what happens? They're all out playing pranks and they're, they're just, they're too much energy, too much energy. So she decided to come up with the idea of having a Halloween party. So Halloween comes around, all Halloween comes around and she's prepared, you know, apple dunking and, and different things that they, people could do, pumpkin carving and, and food and cakes. And she was all ready for them. So here come all these teenagers and children, and they enjoyed their time at her home. She had like little masks and, oh, everybody had a wonderful time. She said, well, they had such a lovely time. They would never mess up my garden again. Come November 1st, she woke up and there her garden once again was a mess. Now, she didn't want to do away with Halloween, but she wanted to make Halloween something a little bit more positive. So what she did, she spent the entire next year from 1913 to Halloween 1914 planning a bigger Halloween party. She included the whole community. They decided to have parades and bands and games and parties and rides and everything they could think of. Well, Come Halloween, she's already made, I mean, she sounds like one of us, right? She's made costumes and decorations and cakes and candies all throughout the community. Everybody came together to really celebrate Halloween, keep the kids from pranking them too much. And guess what? All of the teenagers and kids came along and they loved it. They enjoyed it. They partied and they had the band playing and everyone had a wonderful time. And when Mrs. Krebs went to bed, she prayed that her garden would not be touched by the pranksters. And that morning, on All Saints Day, she woke up to find her garden just as beautiful as ever. And the police officer said there wasn't a single prank that had been pulled, or at least very, very few. And he decided to support Mrs. Krebs every year, and it became a celebration in Hiawasa, Kansas, to always celebrate Halloween. So another tradition that started thousands of years ago would be the poor would pray and ask for alms in return for prayers for the dearly departed of the families that they would visit. Later on, of course, with Christianity and as part of Saints Day and Souls Day, these individuals who come around and, of course, offer prayers for those who had departed, and they would call it solely. And as a result, the people would give them fruits and vegetables, but they would also give them soul cakes. Now, these soul cakes were very hearty biscuits or cookies, but very thick and hearty that they can carry with them. And there was even a song that went along with it. A soul cake, a soul cake, a soul cake. Dear Master and Mrs. A Soul, one for Peter, one for Paul, and three for him who saved us all. Isn't that interesting? And that later became what we know now as trick-or-treating. Now you can imagine, with the story of Trickster Jack and Soli, they kind of combined together. And for those who would request alms or for soul cakes, and perhaps the house had run out of soul cakes, well, Maybe there was a trick waiting for them instead. But yes, these are the origins of our now modern time.
times trick or treating. Can you believe it? I know. It's amazing. I thought it would be fun to share with you the recipe of how to make soul cakes. Maybe you will incorporate it into your Halloween festivities this year and many years to come. It's a very simple and easy recipe and I've never made it before so let's do this together. But let me share the ingredients first. They'll also be in the description below. One and a half cups of flour, three and a quarter cup of sugar, two teaspoons of spices which I will explain later three egg yolks, three quarter cups of butter, uh, softened of course, dried fruit, as much as you'd like, at least half a cup, and half a cup of milk. Also a quarter cup of brown sugar or caster sugar for outside of the uh, soul cakes. So let's get started. All I did here is I'm creaming together the butter and the sugar. Again, remember that the butter needs to be at room te temperature, not melted, just softened. And I like to mix my egg yolks before I add it to the creaming of the butter and the sugar. And I went old school here. I wish I had a wooden like bowl. I thought it would be really cool to have a wooden bowl, but this is like my, my cool, like I love this like mixing spoon. It just looks so cool. Anyway, I'm just creaming together the butter and the sugar. One thing I didn't mention in the ingredients is I did add a teaspoon of vanilla simply because well I like vanilla but you don't have to add it you can add almond flavor you can add any kind of other flavor if you'd like maybe even maple I want to try different um, extracts just to see if it changes the flavor but the original has no vanilla flavoring whatsoever now I'm going to sift the flour in and the way I sift my flour or the way I've seen other people do it I'm not the greatest baker people I don't know if you've ever seen me cooking on my channel probably haven't but I'll be honest this was very easy even for a novice now for the spices these are the four major spices that you would use during the fall which is clove cinnamon ginger and nutmeg now you can also use pumpkin pie spice because all of those spices are included there so you can imagine what a nice spicy cookie or kind of like a scone this comes out to be once you've mixed together the whole batter you're going to knead it together onto a floured surface as you see here on my cutting board and I, I love the fact that I can just you know round it it's so so simple you can even just you know just spoon it out onto the if you want to like a rough looking kind of scone cake you can just you know spoon them out and put it onto the baking sheet but I wanted to follow the tradition and cut them into the circles as they normally would appear of course, I don't have a biscuit cutter, so I'm just going to use a, a, a cup. I don't know if you've used that before yourself. And I'm just cutting out various uh, of the soul cakes. At this point, I like to put my oven to preheat at 350 degrees while I cut out my biscuits here. It's only going to take five or six minutes for my oven to preheat. So that gives me just enough time to cut out all of my soul cakes. And this was a non-stick a baking sheet, but I did just add a little bit of butter. I used actually the butter wrappers. I don't know if you've done that yourself. Just take the butter wrapper and just spread it across that baking sheet. Now, what's very important about the soul cakes is the cross in the middle. That's what really makes it a soul cake. So traditionally, of course, because this was offered in alms or for prayers, this was always included a little cross just in the middle of the soul cake. It also makes it very easy to break apart and share the soul cake with those around you. Once you've added all your crosses to your soul cakes, now you can add the dried fruits. You can also add the dried fruits in the dough itself if you prefer. And again, you can add any kind of dried fruits that you'd like. This would be wonderful with apples as well. But I just decided to use my cranberries. I'm using cranberries. I don't like raisins. I don't know. How do you feel about raisins? But I love dried cranberries. So I decided to make the decoration of the cross with the cranberries. I also left some half of the batch. I left them plain. Uh, just in case I thought it would be nice just to say have some plain soul cakes as well but if you'd like just decorate this with any kind of dried fruits that you choose I forgot to mention also as you're making the dough if it's getting too tight and you want to loosen it a little bit just add like a teaspoon a teaspoon of milk with the leftover milk I'm just brushing the tops of my soul cakes to adhere 
my uh, cinnamon sugar. I used the spices that were left over and added brown sugar and that is what I'm going to coat the sole cakes with. You can also use an egg wash if you prefer. Uh, that makes it a little bit more glossy and um, it wasn't in the original recipe but if you prefer that you can do that as well. And again, I apologize that I didn't say that you can add the milk to the dough if it's getting too tough. Now we'll pop them in the oven for around 15 to 20 minutes. Again, it's preheated at 350 degrees. And as you can see, this is a real fun recipe for you to do together with your family and your children. And look at how beautiful they turn out. I think this is really something wonderful to enjoy. Maybe on Halloween morning, you can offer this to your family or when they come back from school. This is a great after school or tea time treat. Right now, I'm going to create a cappuccino for my son Luke because he's studying uh, for his classes and his exams and everything now in the fall. He's already in his sophomore year. I can't believe it. So I thought it would be nice to, to surprise him with soul cakes and cappuccinos. I personally am going to have a soul cake with some tea. I have some vanilla chai tea and I can't wait to try it out with my soul cakes. My soul cakes are nice and warm and just breaking them up, it's, it just tasted so wonderful. So I hope you adopt this wonderful tradition to your Halloween this year. And I hope you and your family enjoy it, just like Luke did as he stole some soul cakes and his cappuccino. <laughs> Again, I want to thank my very sweet, dear friends and very crafty, creative ladies, Monica of Up All Night DIY, Brandy of Making It My Own DIY, and Dawn of Shabby Meets Bling. We are true friends and we help and inspire each other and support each other in these kind of collaborations and every day. So I hope you take the time to check out each of these channels as they will inspire you just as well. Well, my sweet spooky friends, tonight's journey has come to an end. I hope you've enjoyed this trip back into time to learn about the origins of Halloween. And now a warning. Now a warning? Well, simply put, you can either use things for good or evil. Now you have this information and you can decide what Halloween should be all about. Are you going to adopt some new traditions? Will you make soul cakes with your children this year? And will you say an extra prayer for those family members who have passed on or even offer a prayer to your neighbors as they come trick-or-treating? It's all up to you. Anyway, I want to thank you all so much for being here today and most especially for always giving me such inspiring words with your comments. So if you've enjoyed this, please leave a comment down below. Let me know how you celebrate Halloween, what you love about it, and your memories of Halloween. And also, if you are here for the very first time and you found this enjoyable, well, please consider subscribing. I can't thank you all enough for your inspiration each and every week. As I always say, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you, and remember to live the adventure and have a very safe and happy Halloween. I'll see you around. <laughs>